Hello colleagues, welcome to this new video tutorial. On this occasion, I will show you how to do an upload and a download on a panel view, one of the HMIs from Alan Bradley. So uh, uh, what I did, uh, I did, I made a backup and also downloaded on a on a panel view that we have at at my work at my at the plant. But when I did it, well, uh, inside there's not much. There's, there's a lot of noise and I couldn't speak. So uh, what I'm going to do now is simply explain the video to, well, in other words, I'm going to add sound to the video, right? I'm going to add the, the voice. So here I have the video and we're going to go step by step. So here, the first thing we're going to do here is to be able to make the transfer. We're going to open the transfer utility, which you can do either by searching for it among your programs or here by opening Factory Talk View Studio and clicking on Transfer Utility, just as shown here. In the video, we go to Tools or Transfer Utility. And here it opens, right? So in this case, I, uh, I didn't have the Ethernet activated. So sorry, added to the Factory Talk Links tree. So what I'm going to do is open Factory Talk Links browser and we're going to add it. So here in Factory Talk Links, with what we're going to do is click on the pin and uh, here we're going to add a new ethernet. So here, there are two options. It can be device list uh, branch. What this does is, that you can add a range of IPs or or certain specific IPs of that are connected to to the Ethernet, or you can add a broadcast which does it searches everything that is on that on that connection. So in this case, we are going to use broadcast. We could have simply added the IP of the pane of the panel view, but in this case, I'm going to do it as a broadcast. So we click OK. Here, it has already been added to Beth. And now we're simply going to close it. And here it has already appeared in our transfer utility. We can see that we have the two HMIs. In this case, we are going to use the HMI with IP ending in 12. And we are going to download. I mean, sorry, we are going to do an upload. So here there are three options. We can use internal storage, external storage, one or two. The internal storage is the one generally used unless the amount is too large, which usually doesn't happen. The amount of backups there in the internal storage, well, you can also use uh, USBs to, to have information there. So in this case, it will be internal storage. So we enter this one and here by clicking button on this, these three dots, what it does is, it will open a window where all the backups we have there appear. Here, in this case, we are going to use the newest one. As you can see, it has a date because to know when it was downloaded, in this case, this one is from 2020, February 12th, 2020, and this one is from 2019. So we are going to use the one from 2020. We click OK. And here you can change the name under which it will be saved. In this case, we will leave it the same. And here, you can also change the location where you want to save it. So here, what we are going to do is put, we are going to, we are going to add a folder here on the desktop. Let's see for a moment. Here on the desktop, we simply click on desktop and add new folder. You can also download up or save the, the, the backup in an existing folder. In this case, the, we add one called backup. We click OK. And here we simply click upload. And here it starts to initialize. The program, uh, which is designed to perform specific tasks, will start to load all necessary components and resources. So. Here, basically, once it has loaded, 
here, once it was loaded, we enter the desktop and go into the backup folder, which is where we saved it. And here precisely is our backup, which is a runtime.mir for panel view. So what we are going to do now is download the same one without making modifications, because what we see right now is just upload and download. So here, when downloading it, we can also change the date. We select download as ARM and we set it, let's put uh, today's date. Well, here we are going to see to explain what we did. Here first we are going to choose the, the runtime. Here it is pointing to one that is on the desktop, but the one we are going to download is not on the desktop, but in the backup folder that we generated. So that's why we have to click here on the three dots. And here we are going to look for our backup, which is here, the backup folder. We click oh, open. And as I mentioned, here we are going to change the name with the current date. So here I made a mistake when I downloaded. I downloaded it in the in the panel view 13, I should have downloaded it. Because here, when I opened it, when I put it in download, 13 was selected. So I downloaded it in 13, and then I downloaded it in 12. Then I simply went physically or to the panel view and deleted the one that wasn't needed. So here, something very important is this that says run application at startup. If you click on this, up when it downloads, it will, you could say it will turn off the runtime that is running and will run this new runtime. If I had done this when I downloaded, it would have, it would have been replaced in 13. So it would have been replaced by an incorrect HMI. So the ideal here is personally how I do it is uh, I don't give run a application at startup because uh, uh, it's a bit dangerous. It's better to do it manually, more carefully, and especially if the line is working, as it can cause some problems. I simply remove that option. Well, I can also comment a bit here. I don't remember very well about delete log files, but replace communication means that you are going to replace the communications of the running HMI with the new ones, the communications configured in this other HMI. So I generally don't click on this one either. When I, uh, when I, when I happen to click on run application at startup, it's rare for me to click on it because generally oh, the application is already running. It's already working correctly. And if we're going to replace it, it might ruin what's already working unless your HMI is perfect. So personally, I don't do it, but there are people who do. So it's your decision. So there we simply give it, here we download, as I mentioned earlier, it's downloading to 13, which is wrong. And let's see. And well, there it downloads. I was tempted to cancel here, but I said, no, something might uh, go wrong. So I'd better let it download. What I did was then download it to 12 simply and uh, and well that's it. So as you can see uploading up and downloading a panel view is very very simple. So I hope you like this this tutorial uh, in replay uh, as you can see as i was saying it's it's very simple there are very few options as you can see for downloading and uploading um, a new runtime and well i think uh, that would be all i hope it has been very useful to you you know any questions comments or suggestions for new videos leave me comments and even just to tell me 
if you like the video or not, please. Every comment you leave helps me a lot for YouTube, the YouTube algorithm to detect me and help grow this community. Also like, uh, uh, share, uh, aku sadete, and obviously subscribe. All of this helps me a lot to continue uploading content and serve you better. So, you know, uh, help me with all that. And well, see you in the next video. Greetings. And I hope you have an excellent day. Bye.